back to my organic gardening series for pandemic food security. Pardon my absence uh, with this safe and home program that we now have statewide. I think we've all had to adjust to make some adjustments, which has taken time. So consider, I consider myself adjusted <laughs> now for the moment. Uh, it's gotten real. And uh, I'm very thankful and grateful that I, I have the support I do in the community and I hope that you do and will give support to others. Uh, and I'm also grateful with all the food that I'm producing from my small little city lot. I have most of my breakfast outdoors with mulberries and blueberries and, and uh, acerola cherries and Suriname cherries are all in right now. So, um, but I wanted to give you a garden update. And so with that slight deviation, uh, I wanted to update you on how the garden is doing and some of the things I've done and um, reappear back onto uh, YouTube, onto my video series. To recap, we spoke about how to lay out a garden, how to prep a garden, get rid of the grass, how to prep your soil by digging it and aerating it and, and then amending it to where you've got the, you know, enough nutrients to get the ball rolling to get the microbes active. And, um, and then we uh, showed you how to direct seed, just a slight uh, demonstration on direct seeding into the garden. And I had some success with that and some failures. This is the row that we direct seeded last time. It was half arugula on the top. And as we get further down here, these are radishes. And I thinned the radishes out a little bit. But we had also planted a second row that was direct seeded lettuce. That was a complete failure. Uh, I had very little successful germination so I took that row out and made it part of this bed over here that is three rows of lettuce so today is April 11th and here is the remainder of a tray I had showed you earlier and at that time I only had one pepper plant coming up which uh, I've already transplanted some of the ones that have come up, but you can see uh, quite a few others came up. There's a lettuce that came up in this cell. I may have transplanted it. And most of the lettuce I've already transplanted out into the garden. And I'll give you a shot of that. But the Joy Joy is ready to go. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how I plant the Joy Joy. And we can take a look at the rest of the garden as well to see how it's doing. Here are some of the transplants that I've taken from a single small cell into little bigger pots. There's three inch pots and there's four inch pots and assortment of pots that I had laying around that I transplanted them to. Most of these are papayas and I'll actually up those to a gallon when they get to a certain size to a bigger pot before I get them in the ground. And you may remember I had these stevias, but here's one of that very first pepper that came up. I transplanted it to this pot so it would um, be in a little more protected environment until it gets uh, bigger and more uh, ready to stand up to the elements. And here's the kale that I had laying around that uh, I didn't plant into the garden earlier, so I went ahead and put it in a pot. And it's getting big enough to actually get put into the ground somewhere. Over here, there's another tray that I started in the meanwhile with eggplant, bunching onions, borage, a little bit more of uh, the joy choy. And this is three rows of fennel and some kohlrabi. And there's some little tiny baby oregano plants there. So you can see them down in these cells. So when they get a little bigger, then I'll, I'll put them into a three inch pot. Here we got some okra, which okra comes up quite quickly and some I've already given away and I'm getting ready to repot some. And there's some basil in these cells been harvesting a lot which has created new room and so I've been planting 
and amending the soil as well. So we'll, we'll quickly go over that. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna prepare this little area here for planting the joy choice. You can see how nice the lettuce area came out. So I'm gonna just make a small row and move the uh, hay aside here and make a small row where I can plant my joy choy, which is a variety of bok choy, right down the center here. And the, and the soil looks really good. So I can see spots where there is compost that was already applied when we did the lettuce row. So um, I'm gonna go a little bit heavier. I got this nice handy little half bucket. Uh, so it's a little bit lighter. So now I'm gonna go along and mix the soil in just a tiny bit. The compost, the soil amendment in with the soil. Just do it slightly, just very easily. You can see with my I dig my handy digging fork. And it gets a little bit outside the row, but like I say, when I go to plant, I'll kind of do everything in a little bit more detail by hand. Just kind of break it smooth. And next, I'm gonna kinda, before I plant, I wanna sort of finish off the hay in a more proper manner. So I wanna get it away from my lettuce so it's not covering up and pinging on the lettuce growth. And, uh, and so I'm gonna attempt to put down a bed of hay and just leave a little strip. A good wheat suppressant and also it maintains good moisture in the bed. We're gonna start planting down at this end. I'm not sure if the camera can see it or not. I'm flying solo as usual. And then we're just gonna plant them. Normally I would give them maybe 12 inches, but since it's so hot and we'll probably harvest them out young, We'll plant them a little closer together. And I try and go in a straight line so that way I got, you know, even distance between my rows that gives me a little space to tiptoe through, through here. So these look like they're anywhere from six to eight inches apart. I may have to take out a few more. By the way, a real important gardening tip, I don't think I've mentioned before now, is I got my gardening clothes on now. My other clothes were my camera clothes. You don't wanna ruin your camera clothes. I also find that it helps to moisten the hay a little bit. It helps it take shape better when I'm trying to stuff it into a small space where it's not, so it's not smothering the plant. So I'll add water and I'll let it kind of soak in here for a while uh, to get nice and damp and pliable. So last but not least, we're gonna come water it in. So this is a very important step as soon as you've planted to really get that soil watered in around the roots of your transplants. Uh, it's a little bit of a shock to the plants uh, when they get pulled out of the trays and they get put into the ground. So you wanna get good contact and good uh, moisture. And also, I try and do this late in the evenings. That way they have overnight to adjust. If you do it in the morning, they're gonna be cooking throughout the day uh, in the hot sun. So I always try and do this when it's cool. If we got an overcast day, I'll do it during the day. Or if not, I'll do it in the evening, 5.30 or so. Uh, look what I just found. My lost trusty tool. I am so happy. So I talked a little bit about fish emulsion and I'm going to go ahead and make a, a little fish emulsion drench for my Swiss chard. And so this is the particular brand I'm going to use and 
And you really need to shake it up, which I've already done, because it does settle to the bottom. And it's pretty yucky stuff, so you don't want to get it on you or your clothes or anyone standing by. <laughs> and it doesn't take much, so I'm just going to put mm, a few ounces per gallon. I got about a gallon of water in there. Here's one. And then we'll take a rag and wipe a little bit off there. You don't want to take this rag inside, so we'll set it here for now. And then you want to make sure you seal it up real good. Okay. And next we want to stir it up. So I've got a little paint stirrer, so I'm stirring it into the water. And then this will be a soil drench. It gives you uh, instructions for uh, soil application and for foliar application, which means it's going to be like a spray. So, um, so I'm using a rough estimate of what the soil, the fo the soil application would be. And also, I'm going to go a little heavier. I've got a lot of experience with it, and you, you know, going heavier doesn't particularly help or hurt in this kind of environment. Okay, so we're going to do the soil drench of the Swiss chard. It's, it's been struggling a little bit of late. It's getting hotter, and it's probably running out of fertility down in the soil. So we're going to give it a little boost with our fish emulsion mix. And I really try not to pour it on the leaves because it's not what I want in my smoothie. But the main thing is you don't want to get it on you. Because <laughs> it's not not a good one and so and then I'll come back and, and and put some water spray it on here so I'm going to spray some water and that will do a few things number one it's going to get any remaining fish emulsion residue that are on the leaves off of there before I put it in my smoothie and number two it's going to wash the nutrients down into the root zone and uh, I'll go ahead and water my plants that we planted a little bit earlier. Give them a little extra shot. They need a little extra care in these days too, that they're first getting established. My kale, my sorrel, eggplant, more kale. Garden's doing great. So that's the garden update. As you can see, the garden's very bountiful. Um, we have, uh, I'm getting probably a meal and a half a day out of it. I put uh, kale and collards and Swiss chard and sorrel into my smoothie every morning. So it, it's about half of my smoothie. And then I eat a full salad, mostly out of the garden every day. So that's half as much shopping as you might have to normally do. That doesn't include the sprouts and some of the other fruit I have around the, um, around the yard. I get quite a bit of fruit every day, actually. So we're gonna have a couple subsequent series to talk about that. Uh, the next one I, I'm gonna do is gonna be about container gardening, because I think that's the most immediate need uh, that can help you quickly, more quickly in the short term. And then the, the subsequent episode I'd like to do on edible landscaping to where you can always have some sort of food coming out of your landscape. Often even parts of my vegetable garden are in my landscape. My tomatoes and my cucumbers are against the fence. I'll put things like fennel and kale and even bok choy and kohlrabi. I'll stick it into my landscape as well as uh, the many other fruits, tropical fruits. Uh, and herbs that I have growing in the in the remainder of my landscape. So we'll, we'll share all of that with you in future episodes. So thank you for tuning in. Welcome back. Uh, stay safe and uh, please share this with all your friends and uh, we look forward to visiting with you again soon. Thank you.